All right. So what is arthritis? Okay. Is it fixable? Once you have it, is it like a, I, I, I did an article uh, this week on it, a podcast about, uh, is it a death sentence? Okay. You go to your doctor and you say, they tell you you have arthritis in your spine. Most people think, well, that's it. I'm done. The problem is, arthritis is when ligaments around the bone, say around my arm here on both sides, that control bones from dislocating, right? So the bones will pop out, the ligaments start to calcify. They start to become, put bone inside the ligament itself. Calcification. That makes ligaments less flexible. It doesn't mean that it's going to freeze up, continue on, and continue to get worse, 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 if you do the right things and move things around. So my biggest thing in my talks about arthritis is how do we, wherever it is right now, how do we stop it to get things better over time so you can, if there's arthritic pain happening in your body, how do you reduce that? There's another form called arthritis with inflammation in your joints sometimes, like rheumatoid arthritis, I was just going to talk today about. That's different. That's more of inflammation in the joints where you need some kind of medication for that. I'm talking about more osteoarthritis, more bone arthritis, where the bone ligaments start to calcify. You'll see them on bone spurs for one, two, you'll see an extra where there'll be a big hook on there also. What I want to do is give you things to start doing. If you get early signs of that, maybe an x-ray MRI or just a feeling of arthritis, how do you do things to prevent that? Okay, the big thing I said a minute ago is cause more motion. If we move more, our body is able to actually stop that arthritic pain, make the muscles recover, and the joints become less stiff. The reason we get the arthritis in the first place when your joint doesn't move. Maybe an elbow, maybe your spine, maybe your fingers, maybe your wrist or ankle or knee. So if we start moving the joint, we get to break up some of that arthritis, get things to move, so our body can actually get the ligaments to stretch and make things not want to put down more and more calcium. I face all the time from, from medical doctors that go, well, once I, my doctor told me I have it, then there's nothing I can do about it. I'm like, that's ridiculous. People come to my office, they have arthritis, they have pain, they have weakness sometimes, so even some nerve pain, but what I want to do is open up those joints, maybe in your spine, which is what I treat, to move things around. If that happens, then that pain goes away. If the pain goes away by moving, we can get the muscle stronger, the joint looser, to so recover so you feel 100%. Arthritis doesn't happen and bam, you have pain the rest of your life. It happens and then you have the pain. So how to reverse that by causing more emotion to get that pain to go away. There's a way to say that. Alright. Any questions so far? My wife has it in her leg also. In her knee or in her hip or in her back? Her whole body. Okay. She's had since she was about 16. And when she was 16, was she in pain the whole time? Mm -hmm. And that thing is how do you move more? At least minimize and reduce that kind of pain level. She just gets used to it. She just gets used to it. And when she moves, does it make it feel better? Sometimes. And that's the thing. You have to. And, and when, if, she get, when she gets up, she has to stand a and, and But once she starts moving, does she start feeling better or does it get stiffer and more sore? I think she just takes it as it comes. And sometimes, if you can get through that, and again, everyone's different, but it's the severity of arthritis, is if you can start moving, even if you have some of it, and let your body work through some of that soreness, then can you get better results? It may take a week, two weeks, three weeks, I've told the story about a thousand times. Uh, Rachel came to my office. She had bad back pain, bilateral, both, both legs were in pain, causing side pain down the legs. She was told by her doctor she had bad arthritis in her back. She was in her, uh, I want to say, late 60s. Um, a shorter Hispanic lady, and it, it came in my office in a walker. So I took her x-rays, and I took her x-rays and saw her spine and says, I said, Rachel, your x-rays are fine. There's no arthritis in there. But my doctor told me, well, how did your doctor tell you? Well, he just told me he didn't take anything. He says, because of your age, you probably have arthritis. So in her mind, she was told that was her death sentence. She can get worse and worse and worse. But her thing is, in, in her being, being a good, if stubbornness can be a good quality, she didn't want to go into a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So her biggest thing is how do you move from where she is? Is it possible? And I, I gave her the, I gave her the x-rays with her. The x-rays are good. Where you are right now, how do you start moving more to go from not deeper into a wheelchair, but also from the from walker to a cane and maybe nothing at all? I said, maybe there's a chance. Mm -hmm. So it's give you, I said, it's give you two, three weeks of 
care that say you do, and I want you to start walking every day. But what hurts? The thing is, a shot every week. And would that shot, does that reduce the pain with the shot? I don't know when it does. I'm supposed to do something, but... And the thing is, I'm okay with the shots if you're going to move to make things a little bit looser and stronger. I have patients that are in severe pain. I go, if you're at pain level 10 and I see you, I'm not going to be very effective. If we get it down with maybe sometimes short term medication use or a shot, then we can start moving when that medication kicks in. She's probably 80. She'll be 80. Yeah. 80 is still young. I have, a patient, I have two patients, 93 years old. Still moving, still, still physically and mentally still there. But how do you start doing things wherever you can do, even if it's sore, to move things around? Go back to Rachel, she was able to go from a, a walker to a cane to now she walks about 45 minutes a day with nothing at all. But it took her about two weeks of going through the pain and sometimes, I'm not cursing at me, but going like, what are you talking about? Mad at me. As she got through that to get herself a little bit healthier over time more and more and more. So can we, what, what can we do wherever state we're at right now to start moving more? Maybe it may be just her arm, maybe it's her upper body to get our body back here where it's more, in our sense, straighter versus being curled forward. When we curl forward, we, it's called hunching forward or slouching forward, where our head goes in front of our body, our shoulders roll forward, upper back hunches, our lower back will sometimes, same thing, hunch this way. That makes the spine, in a spinal arthritis sense, lock itself up. So my job is how do we get our bodies back here, back to where our head comes more over our shoulders, not in front of our body, shoulders roll backwards, our upper back starts to straighten out, our lower back straightens up since we have a little bit of curve back in our lower back, so our body can actually start loosening up. Okay? Again, if my body curls forward, my bones lock. If I keep my elbow locked straight like this, where I keep it extended out the whole time, it locks. If it locks, it's hard to move. It will be sore and painful, yes. But can you move things around from here to here to here to here to make your body over time looser? If the joint's looser, does it make sense? If the joint's moving, will the muscles get stronger? Most people say yes, right? Okay. If the joint's locked, the muscle gets weaker. So if my joint's locked going forward, my muscles will be weak and painful. I have to start moving in a better direction and then it feels better. Once I get here, that may take two or three or four weeks. But can I get there to feel better and then at that point start being stronger this way? Once I get there, the body can stay that way. Okay? <coughs> Any questions yet? You think Medicare? Yes. For Medicare patients, we charge a $5 copay. Maybe the most, if anything, if you have nothing at all, um, charge a $10 copay. But the first thing is, like we talked about earlier, is do you have arthritis in your spine? We take the x-rays in our office, is what we do, to make sure we look at the whole spine first, and we give you recommendations to start doing at our office, and then at home, to get looser and then stronger. We have a transfer for life. But... I, I, I want to check with the girls and see. Hmm? I want to check with my staff would know more than me. If I say yes, they're going to say no to get mad at me again. I don't want them to with me too much. Just a little bit. Okay. But I want to make sure if I'm going to see someone, maybe a senior even younger too, how do we get back here first, my body's back here, and then we work on strength this position. So if we're stronger with a moving joint, then the body can maintain that regular, regularity so you can maintain that routine of stretching and exercising so this stays strong. But step one is where are you now? What feels weak? What feels painful? And if it feels painful, and it's hard to move, and it continues hard to move, make sure my disclosure is, if I have one disclosure is, how do we get you to get an x-ray done or some type of testing done so we make sure we're not gonna cause more damage by causing motion first. Once I clear that out, boom, I get the green light, I go, I run. Okay, I wanna make sure, if you're a little sore, great. Well, that patient will go, why, why am I sore though? Why is that great? Because that's where we're moving something. We're making your body uncomfortable. We're going to go home and ice it down so that muscle heal. Next day, do the same thing over again and add more and more and more so you're uncomfortable. Because your comfort zone right now is making that person's sense weaker and weaker and weaker. We've got to move things around to make you uncomfortable, to make you stronger and more flexible. That's the plan. Okay, so to start, I'm going to 
give you my first set of exercises with my patients. This is my secret that I don't tell anyone. I do it every time. Okay, I'll go from an angle here. So you guys might be able to see better from that angle. So what I do, I, and I talked about earlier, Brian, is, is I, I work everyone on, on the, my tables or floor first, or if they're comfortable with their bed too, so they, they can do it in a relaxed position. Okay, change this angle too here. When you're lying down, I'll move, this, I'll move this over here so it's easier to see. Is that okay? Yeah. Right there? If, if I'm lying down, my body has no weight on it. There's no load on it. Is that okay right there? My body has no weight. So if I'm lying down, my body should be relaxed and possibly not sore at all. If it is, maybe very minimally. Okay? That means there's no load on the back. There's nothing causing things to bend or cause weight bearing stress on my joints. From here, can I get my upper body, my body's going forward here, like this. Can I get my hands, good, thanks for moving. Can I get my hands and arms back here to slowly stretch things backwards? So, what I do is have people take a bath towel, any bath towel, any color, any, any pattern, any shape. I like bright colors myself, okay? At that point, take that towel to get the head to come back behind the shoulders. Okay, to start, what I do is have them right here, put the towel at sometimes at their head where they're comfortable, at the neck, I'm sorry, neck where they're comfortable, so your head slowly comes back looking straight up. That may start and feel, I want to stretch to feel tight, maybe a tiny bit sore, but that's it. If it feels painful, it's too much, just back it off. Do something less aggressive. Okay? That feels good, but with the pillow on my neck, I'm gonna have you do is move that pillow. Right? I call it pillow, but I rolled up bath towel in this sense to my shoulders. So now my neck can fall behind my body to be more to get that head translate backwards, get gets a curve in the neck to bend back more to get those joints to open up even more. Okay? I would start a patient holding this for about 30 seconds with your arms and my hands right now, either across my body or next to my body. In that position, then move your arms overhead to get the stretch even more. Okay? Any questions about that? Where is that towel? That towel is the base of my shoulders right here. So I'll go from this angle too. It's right here. So first one's going to be on my neck. Here. Where it feels, feel, it feels a little tight, a little uncomfortable, so pinch uncomfortable, I'm gonna go from here to here. Okay? Mm -hmm. If that feels good, doesn't hurt for about 30 seconds, I move this towel down to my shoulders, right about here. And a little higher. Here, here we go. And then let my head now fall behind my body, 30 seconds here. Hands here, legs straighter up, guys, the mat. And then from there, arms overhead for 30 seconds. So we'll stretch the shoulders along with the neck when you bring your arms overhead. You can get the back, the arch a little bit more in the upper back to get your back to stretch more too. Okay? Any questions about that? I'm ready for a nap right about now. This feels good. This feels good right here. <laughs> Everyone's different though. If someone, if someone has neck pain and they have sharp arm pain, I may hold off on this initially until they feel a bit better. Then I'll progress into this over time. Okay? So maybe start with 30 seconds. If that feels good, then go to maybe a minute. At that point, slowly get that head further back. If it's further back, then your body can sit upright and stand upright instead of being stuck here. Again, lying down allows to have no load, so it shouldn't cause a lot of soreness. If you do it standing, we're sitting in a couch or, or a chair too, that may be too much for the head sitting on top of the neck to cause too much pressure. That's step one. That's called by, in my video, it's called a pillow stretch for one, two. Okay, in both positions. Now, take the same towel, put that towel across the back, right here, my back here, in that position. Now I'm gonna do is lie down across that, right above my belt line, come down, 
and put that right where my belt line is and come over there. Okay? If I do that, that feels, again, tight but not painful. I'm going to go with my legs if it should be more comfortable here for the 30 seconds. That feels good. 30 seconds down here. Again, I can sleep like this. Okay? But this allows the back to open up. At that point, that stretching, ligaments will stretch to get that scar tissue to get out of there. Either prevent or stretch out the arthritis to allow more motion. If there's more motion, that will reduce the arthritic pain. That's the plan. If you open the joint, especially lying down, we're distracting, pulling it apart, decompressing the area, allow things to feel better first. Okay? At that point, if, if I'm hunching forward, if I'm hunching forward, when I sit or stand, my back is naturally curved forward, my back goes straight instead of being bending backwards where it should be. The back is straight or bending forward, the lower back, it tightens up and locks. If I'm leaning back more, my bones are moving backwards, and then it stays open and loose. That's the plan. You have to do stuff in extension, bending backwards, get our body to stay loose and then stronger. Again, so here is called the low back roll stretch. Here, position one, legs up, pull out the belt line, roll the bath towel from there. Position two, legs flat, hold that position. Again, 30 seconds minimum. If you can do it for a minute, even better. I'll give you a gold star or something. All right, any questions about that? Next one, if my body is bending forward like this, right? Okay, if I'm standing, and I stand so I can see myself. If I stand and my body's like this here, I gotta slowly come back here. Okay? If this feels good in both the lower back and neck, so you see a minimum of 30 seconds, can I slowly bend backwards now even more to cause more extension to start with lying down? That's my next step. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. To start, I'm going to lie on my stomach this time. Again, in my bed, floor, whatever you want to use, not in the patio in the hall because I'll probably call 911 or something on <laughs> I would, again, my disclosure, I don't know how this place works, but that might be something. Can I take to where what we're going to do is go from, let me do that one more time. Any questions about that? Do you do these exercises once a day? Or I do them once a day. I do them once a day. For me, what I do, my routine is in the morning. I like to work out. That's my workout. Everyone's still asleep. I go at 5 in the morning. Everyone's still passed out. Even my dog. Sometimes I try to wake my dog up. Sometimes it falls me out of the room. Sometimes it's like, just like, get away from me. I'm done. I'm still sleeping. And now it's dark too. So what I'll, what I'll do my exercises, I'll do, I'll do them. I use a hard form of something like this to roll like this to roll up my legs, my calves, my quads, my back too. I'll do this. I'll do some planking, some sit-ups too before I leave the house. My gym's about 15 minutes away. By the time I leave the house, I'm warmed up, I go to the gym, I'm going to do some light cardio, and then I'll do the weights. So I want to make sure I'm ready to go before I actually get, get out of the house. Before I go to bed, too, because I, I work all day on people sometimes, I go home and sometimes I feel like this. It's like, ugh. Just beat up sometimes. Ugh. So I feel like this, I want to come home and stretch before I go to bed. My routine before I go to bed, I stretch, take my fiber, and then I knock out. It's my bed. But I learned to do that because when I do that, I wake up the next day, I work out. I can run, I can do heavier weights what I want to do, and I don't feel sore. I don't feel beat up. I, I might be sore, but I won't pull anything. I haven't pulled a muscle, knock on wood, probably in about a couple years or so. And I, I, I've increased my weight when I weight lift probably twice as much. I'll just do less reps. But my thing is, can I myself keep myself healthy, I can do what I want to do work-wise, but also give people a good example too. Okay, any questions about the exercises so far? So again, I'm going to post that as a video, but I think this week with the girls, for the, my, most of my patients is here. Step one, find your stomach, 30 seconds, feels good, up on your elbows, last one here, all the way up, either all the way up if you're comfortable with that position, or in between. If your body feels that the lower back's working more, keep your body extension. When I'm doing this, I want my lower back muscles to fire a little bit, feel a little bit of a pull, a little pressure in there, so there's more blood flow in there too. So I get out of bed, off the floor, whatever I'm doing, and my body's awake. It's moving around. If my muscles are awake, 
less chance of injury, hint, hint, less chance of falling, less chance of losing your balance if muscles and joints are awake. That's the plan. Can we wait our body to wake up, prevent injury, prevent falls by doing these exercises? That's what we want to do. Okay? okay you, you said that if, if it, every position that you were in, you said if it feels comfortable, what if it doesn't feel comfortable? Then you want to want to back it off. If I if I feel if I feel good here, but I don't feel good here, I'm just going to stay here for 30 seconds to a minute. <clears throat> And over time, can I go from here by doing it every day, by doing it every day, to allow my body to go from here to here? That's the plan. If we do them every day, our muscles, joints, and joints will stretch to make things want to cause more motion, and next day will be better. And next day will be better. We have to do them every day. If not, what happens is, since before too, the rigor mortis kicks in. And things get tighter and tighter and tighter. Doesn't matter if you're 20 or 80, your muscles and joints will tighten up. My daughter had knee surgery about a month and a half ago now, and now she's getting rehab done, but now her knee's really, really tight because of not moving. She couldn't move because she had, she had full knee ACL replacement. So, how do we start moving things around now, wherever you are, and get more and more motion? That's the plan. All right. Any questions so far? Good, done? Done good? All right. Next thing, I've been on the floor so long I feel lazy already. Okay, now I want to get up, show some standing things. Okay, my solution for the standing ones is, do you have good balance? Okay, if you don't, how do you gain your balance back? Starting with, I had a patient, is it Joanne? Uh, I think it was Shirley. She came in about three months ago. Same thing in the walk, people like walkers for some reason. You know, walking like this, leaning over, and go, my back hurts, I'm sore, I've lost my balance, everything is just going downhill, like, what happened? She walks with pain, too, she, her doctor, who was a respiratory therapist, told her, you have to slow everything down, because you can't breathe very well. You have to use your tank, because you're in the your home. like, I understand that, but as, you're, as you've not moved for about three months now, how's your body felt? Weaker, less balanced, overall, body's going over the wheelchair, over the walker. So my job with her, first of all, is to go, how do I go with wherever she is to start more of a standing upright posture? Most walls in Ontario here have been approved by the city, by an inspector, right? They're pretty straight, I'm assuming. It's a permitted building, I think, right? <laughs> but if I'm assuming that, just that my assumption, if this wall's straight, I'm gonna get my back straight against the wall, okay? Starting with my feet, heels first, hips, Shoulders and then head. I want to feel this is being normal. Okay. What's your name again? Carlos. Carlos? Want to try this? Sure. Let's see. You seem like an active person. <laughs> Let's see, Mr. Carlos. <laughs> and this was you find before too, I think, in the first up. So, heels against the wall, good. Okay. Shoulders. Let them drop a little bit. And head, good. Does that feel normal to you? Yeah, that's pretty good. Good, good. Take a step forward for me. Carlos, right there. Put your weight on your heels. How does that feel? Not too bad. Feels crazy. What, what feels like it's firing more? What feels different when you put the weight on your heels? I feel a little bit of strength. Yeah. It's, it's, trying, it's trying to hold you forward, right? Yeah. Okay. How's your lower back feel when you lean back? Good. It, sh it should feel like when you're leaning back, you should feel these muscles fire more. So it makes your body want to get a little stronger in that straight position. Okay. When the back muscles fire, you have seven layers of back muscles. The biggest ones are called erector spinae. They're meant to be erect, keep you erect and straight by pulling you this way. So when we walk, Carlos, if we can walk on our heels, our body sees as a better normal, recalibrates our brain to see this is normal versus leaning forward. So a lot like you do already, how do we maintain that by knowing position is better for us now that we know it, so our back stays strong. So we stay this way. Okay? This is part of getting your body backwards, like lying down, where for backwards, our joints stay open, they stay mobile, so arthritis can't get in there. Ligaments can't calcify, 
to make me want to become stiffer and tighter, stiffer and tighter. Again, this is not a death sentence, but we have to do things to prevent that from happening. Carlos, one more thing if you have time. I'll use one more thing. I don't want to, to wear you out. Okay. I'm going to show you something I'm serious. So grab a seat for me. You want to promote when you're sitting, grab a seat. Good posture also. So when I sit, you notice like that. That's, that's, that's normal posture, right? It feels okay? Okay. If you move forward in the chair, more. Right there. Now with your legs, because you're tall like me, or we're tall together, I think, is bring your legs now over here on the sides. And bring your foot behind you, more so on your toes. Other side too. How's that feel? A little odd. Good. Odd how? I don't feel balanced. Of course, balanced. Because you don't feel balanced, what do you have to do? Lean forward or lean backwards? I, 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 I lean backwards. Huh. What well, looks better? What do you think? Does that feel like you look better that way? I think so. I think you look great. You're gorgeous. <laughs> okay? But if, if we're leaning backwards, our body's straighter. Mm -hmm. That keeps our body straight. You're basically counterbalancing your body so you don't fall forward and embarrass yourself like I would. Leaning back, keeps your body strong here, so your back doesn't have to fire, right? Yeah. Okay, this position here is called our sitting checklist. I have my patients do too. So, what we're going to do is put our knees below our hips, feet underneath or behind us. This is a little kind of a narrow chair, so the head cars put your feet up behind them. At that point, by being back here on your toes, gets the knee to drop, so our body wants to sit up and counterbalance. Yeah. Want to try that? See how that feels? Okay. But by doing that, that allows your body to stay upright instead of leaning forward and hunching forward like an old person. It's old people. This is what young people do. What I'm teaching you to do, I'm teaching you to do. Is there a dare no move? My legs are short, so I can't. <laughs> even better, even better. Short legs are even better. You fit small places. Scoot forward for me. More, 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 more. Good, right there. Now, for you, because you are a little bit smaller than some people, for your knees to be actually right here. Oh, that one too. Yes. How's that feel? Good, sit up straight. Here, more, more, more. Lean forward on your knees. That point, body up. There we go. Yeah. That's the better spot. You look taller, too. <laughs> okay, I am taller. Yeah, you feel, instead of being 4'8", you're 4'9". It's uncomfortable, though. Good, because why is it uncomfortable? What feels uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. What feels uncomfortable? It's just that I haven't done this before. That's the reason, because you're uncomfortable because it's not your normal position. It's not your normal position. No. If, and again, same thing with Carlos too. If my home position is back here in the chair, at that point, back in my head, that's good for me. When I change positions, it goes, oh, what am I doing? It's not normal for you, but it's a standard normal. That will get your back pressure to reduce, your back stronger, your overall body staying here instead of here. I have kids that go to college that are studying a lot. They have back pain here, here, and sometimes leg pain too. Have them do this, they go, that feels so weird. Yes, it does. Because you're used to leaning over a desk like this all day. Yeah. By doing this, Carlos, by standing like this, by leaning forward when you, when you lean back when you stand, that's how you get your back stronger. All right, any questions, my short friend? <laughs> my taller friend now because you're sitting up straight. <laughs> all right? She's 99. You're great for 99. I'm trying to get to 49. That's all I'm hoping for. <laughs> That's the thing is how do you move things around so we get things to feel better over time and feel stronger. In the meantime, our transition from where we are now to better normal, that may feel uncomfortable, that may feel a little sore, good, you're causing a change. You have to get your body to change to get the feel to better standard posture and so position. Anytime, anytime we sit down, we should always sit like that. Yes. Start that. Okay. Get tired, back up a little bit, then go back until you're comfortable. And if you can walk that way too, where your body's back on your heels, mm -hmm. it still feel more comfortable to you. People that sit like this normally, this will feel awkward and weird for a while. Mm -hmm. Once you do this for about maybe three or four weeks or so, Carlos, at that point, you're not going to want to do this. Mm -hmm. It'll feel like that feels weird to me. Mm -hmm. But you have, to, you have to trick your brain to over time feel uncomfortable to feel comfortable. It's a standard normal. At that point, again, going back to arthritis, our joints are staying open because we're leaning back more. That one, you can't have arthritis. You can't put it in your spine, you can't put it in your back. Because we sit too much, it gets in there first, and then we have pain to go, oh, that's it, we're done. No. 
You have to move to get that pain out of there and then stronger so as to come back again. By holding the position over time, by watching this way over time, 10, 15, 20 minutes where you're comfortable, get stronger here, there to get strong so you can't go backwards. If you're strong, you tolerate more stress, have better balance, better strength, and prevent falls, prevent injuries. You gotta look straight ahead instead of down. That's it. Good, stand up, stand up for me, stand up. Let's see this. Like that straight head down thing, that's my next topic, I think. When I stand up and I, and I walk, do I walk like this? Or do I walk up here? When I walk this way, Carlos, what I do is look down over my, look down over my nose, not with my eyes. Alright, so use your vision range. How far can you go down? Take my finger and go down to about here. So I can't see anything, it seems kind of blurry. So if I can go down here with my eyes, look this way, keep my head up when I'm walking, my back leaning back more, even walk or and some people will jog this way too, instead of this way with my eyes. I dread not doing how you can get here. I see people walking all day long, walking like this. I go, I don't, I have no idea why you're backwards. <laughs> because they're reinforcing this posture, Don, instead of being back here. Alright. Any questions, Mr. Carlos? No. Learned something today? Learned something today. Me too. I have a different question. What's that up? I have a different question. Yes, Don. How do you straighten out your fingers? Is take what I do is take your other hand and push those fingers back. So I'm going to push them back this way and pull them back. So put your hand in that extension and bring them back that way. The further you come back, the more they're going to want to open up. Ligaments in your front hand here are a lot stronger than the ones in the back. I'm sorry, not ligaments, the tendons. Tendons in here, controlled by muscles in your, in your forearm, are stronger in your front or front inside, inside forearm versus the back of the arm. At that point, by getting the stretch themselves out, you're getting more motion overall. So you might straighten out your fingers too? And again, you want to check for arthritis if it's sort of taking an x-ray. But as long as you push things backwards where it feels tight and not painful, hold up for 30 seconds at a time, a few times a day, you should get that stretch out. You'll feel the hand first, or time you feel the forearm too. Okay? I've answered for everything, Don. If I don't know, I'll at least sound confident. I'll be fine. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. All right. Any other questions at all? That's the biggest thing is can we move with our body being back, maybe lying down with a pillow stretch to the neck, using a rolled up bath towel, or your lower back pillow stretch to the low back roll stretch, or lying on your stomach, going from here to here to here to slowly get your body to stretch. And stand against the wall, hold that for about 15, 20 seconds, Carlos, then come off the wall, where our weight's on our heels, our feet going forward, sitting this way, standing this way, walking this way, looking down, finding our range with our finger, how far can I keep my head straight looking down past my nose so I look this way instead of like this. Okay, walking this way. Thing two, you want to get taller in a chair, sitting checklist, instead of being back in your chair, using the back part of the chair, that can lean forward with the knees below the hips, feet underneath us or behind or next to us, where body stays up more right, or upright. Here, oh, you're good, you're good, you're good, I saw that. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Here, instead of being here. And feeling initially uncomfortable, a little sore, and over time making it strong because you are comfortable and sore. That tells me things are being stretched to cause that to stay stretched instead of being tight where arthritis can get inside even more of that, cause more arthritis, more rigor mortis. Alright, any questions? Alright, feel taller, be taller. <laughs> it's, hard. it's hard, but is it worth it? Is it worth it? Can we get stronger? Can we get better right balance to prevent falls that way? That's what I do. That's just me and I'm 44. I get to 49. <laughs> That's it. Anything else, guys? No.